Give me just a second. Oh, I got it. Happy and blessed Tuesday night, Team Relentless. Welcome to our training. This is what we do each and every Tuesday night. And I get to just serve in the function to help offer support for everyone while we do these training sessions. So hopefully you understand the class will be in session tonight. We get to learn a great deal of skills that we can apply for not only the growth of this business, but in my opinion, I think that it helps us grow overall. So if we have not previously met, my name is Myra Ferreira. I'm one of the executive ambassadors that gets to work with everyone here on the team. And I started out with my day one, just like so many of us have in the past. And we're looking to continue to just translate that into success for many individuals. We love to start out in the spirit of celebration. So for tonight, I wanna recognize these are the top 10 or the top agents within our entire organization nationwide who have topped the chart so far with enrolling the highest number of clients. And these are people who have decided they wanna take their financial security and access to options by hand and made that decision to commit to becoming clients of the program. And many of us as well have reaped benefits from this. So a shout out goes to the number one spot held by Vice, uh, Ambassador Dr. Arnold Bogarty. Next, our, ex our Executive Ambassador, David Marquez, Portia Burnett, Tehran Henderson, Tishia Rowland, Pete Lago, Sandra Brooks, Dominique Brown, and Victoria Peña. So definitely celebrate them in the chat. You want to you want to be able to celebrate the success that happens around you the same way you want others to celebrate yours. Moving on to our second recognition list. This is for the top recruiters. So these are the agents that perhaps invited you, but you're going to hear some familiar names because they've continued to grow this team, inviting others to be able to change their lives, take business into their own hands and grow and build this by blessing so many others. So the number one spot held by Tashia Rowland. Paola Tenorio and Mr. David Marquez. So again, let's celebrate them in the chat, recognizing them for continuing to grow, putting through and implementing the techniques. A lot of the things that we get to learn doing trainings such as these, which you should be plugged into each week. So for anyone that's new, a huge welcome to you and congratulations on making what I think would be one of the best adult decisions you can make. And tonight we get to, again, continue to learn and kind of take off from last week's topic. You see, like I had said, a lot of the skills that we get to develop and grow will translate into how much of an income this opportunity in the industry of network marketing can grant for you. But it does have to start with, where do we begin? Where do you get started? You know, and a lot of things such as inviting, a lot of things such as introducing, just the idea or even piquing that interest is taught and learned by training sessions like this. So I now had a chance to speak with uh, one, uh, definitely a friend of mine, a business partner, one of our mentors and a name that we are very familiar with at this point to go into another segment, just to expand a little bit more on the topic of telling our story, which we got started on next week. And we're gonna go ahead and move forward with that topic. So without any further delay, please give all of your undivided attention to, I mean, this gentleman has been, uh, highly successful not only in this business but also in general growing as a person he's a father he's a mentor to so many he's contributed greatly with regards to building this team regardless of whether or not he's incentivized but just being able to witness his growth and knowing that he moves forward with that sense of progress because he's looking to continue to help other people he's someone that i pay a lot of attention to and i'm always learning as far as what he has to what, what he has to say and all the skills that he's acquired over the years. Again, I've witnessed so much of his change and that has translated to the lifestyle he's been able to create for himself, for his wife, for his children. And I know that he has continued to grow on that journey. So I saw him join as well. Please give us your undivided attention to Mr. David Marquez. Can you hear me, David? Hey, what's up, Myra? Listen, David had oh. a little bit of emergency. I know he is on right now, guys. Okay. Send prayers to him and his family. If he decides he wants to disclose what's going on, um, you know, I'll leave that to him. But listen, guys, I, you know, I have to be very, very transparent um, with, with everyone. And like I was kind of saying, 
uh, before um, some more people hopped on, we got to take accountability about what's going on and accountability for our business. And not only accountability for our business, but we got to be real with ourselves and, and ask ourselves, is this something that we really want to do? Or are we just playing games at it? Or are we just, you know, uh, fooling ourselves, you know, because you can fool other people, but you can't fool yourself. And if you're saying that you want to be successful in anything, whether it's, you know, sports, whether it's life, whether it's a marriage, whether it's parenting, you know, whether it's finances, you, you got to show up, you got to show up in those areas. And um, what I can see as a team right now is we've been sorely lacking in the, the showing up. There's no way on a Tuesday night that we should have, that we have more people on the morning grind, eight o'clock in the morning, than we have on our Tuesday night team training at 9 p.m. And um, you guys know me, I'm, I'm positive all the time. I, I, I look at life definitely with the cup half full. And, you know, I, I like to be the team cheerleader in chief, the encourager in chief. Um, but, you know, with, you know, 13 people on here right now out of a team, you know, at my last numbers, and that's not even Davis numbers, this is my last numbers of about 380 active people. Um, it should be a lot more people on here. And so, um, Let's go ahead and just take accountability of that. And then this number that we see right here is a direct proportion of where the business is and where your business is, all right? If you don't have people on your team on this training, then your business isn't growing. Why? Because the momentum is not there because the excitement is not there. And that comes from the accountability not being there. You know, I just put a, a, a message in my team chat and I told him, I was like, listen, if you don't wanna be here anymore, don't fake it. Okay. Please exit the chat. All right. No love lost. Okay. But I want to work with the people that want to be here. No love loss at all. And sometimes we got to have that real conversation, you know, with ourselves and then with our people, because I believe in the company. I believe in what we're doing. Guys, I just got off a webinar, you know, had a little over 350 people on and the excitement was just, was just bubbling over. And that excited me even more because I remember when I first got started with this company, you know, this is what it felt like the way it feels now. And I'm not talking about team wide, but I'm talking about company wide before we went on that massive run in 2020 and 2021. You know, it, it's that it's that groundswell that's that's coming and I can just feel it. And especially with the excitement of the people that I had on the webinar. And, and so if we're going to be a part of this. We got to be real and stop playing at it because right now we're treating this thing like a hobby. And I guarantee if you go look in some of the back, back your back offices right now, it's paying you like a hobby. And if we're going to change that, it all starts with accountability of ourselves, but then it starts with holding our teams accountable and then working with the people that want to work with. And it, it may be that, you know, your best friend, it may be that your mom or your sister, your cousin, your brother, your uncle, you know, may not want to take this journey with you anymore, but they may have started with us. That is fine. No love lost. Give them a hug. But, you know, this this next, you know, five week volume month, you know, it can make a break. Your your 2013 can definitely make a break your Christmas, your New Year's, you know, the goals that you have set. And so it, it's up to us if we're going to take this thing serious. And the only way that you can gauge that, how serious people are, is if they're showing up. Not if they're enrolling a bunch of people, okay? That's up for people to make a decision, all right? But showing up and learning, committing your time, and then putting into action what we teach, and not only what we teach, what Billy Scott teaches, what Alfred teaches, the millionaire mindset, all right, our VP of training, what they teach, put it into action, and then the numbers are going to take care of themselves. And so I don't believe I've ever seen 13 people on a Tuesday night training. And, and so, but we're going to move on, guys. We're going to go. And, you know, I, I looked forward to training uh, last week. You know, we trained on telling our story and I'm going to go ahead and share my screen right now. But last week we trained on, you know, telling our story. 
and uh, it was a lot of fun. A lot of fun. It's always a lot of fun when we uh, when we go over that. And I am trying to get this off my screen. That way I could go to full screen. Let's see if I can get this off. Boom, boom. All right, let's go ahead and move it over a little bit. And I should be able to get it off. All right, let me go ahead and share again. But yeah, and so we're going to go into uh, training tonight. Uh, Myra, let me. All right, here's how we're going to do it. Let me go right here. Next full screen, go over here. PowerPoint. Guys, just give me a half a second. Bam, there we go. All right. Now, let's share my screen. Myra, you see my screen or no? Not no, yet? not yet. Mm -mm. All right, cool. Now, share screen. Boom. Boom. And let's move this over. All right, there we go. Everybody should be able to see my screen right now. Yes. You got it, Myra? Yes, we do. All right, cool. All right, guys. So last week, all right, we went over sharing the story, but today we're going to go over the perfect business presentation or the perfect business opportunity presentation. And, and this is important for a lot of reasons, but the main reason this is important is because you want to create duplication. And the only way to create duplication is one leading by example, which I kind of, you know, went off on my little soapbox about accountability and, and leading by example. All right. But you want to have your business working even when you're not working. So just a quick reminder of what we went over. All right. You know, as far as sharing your story, and I'm not going to go into this too much, guys. But, you know, part one was your background. OK, what do people know most about you? All right. There may you may have done a lot of things in your background. OK, like myself, I was a bouncer. I was a lifeguard. I delivered pizzas. Um, I've done a lot. I've done a lot in my history, but most people know me for being in the military. And so that's what I focused on. I focused on, you know, what the good things about it, but also what hurt me about it. Okay. What didn't you like about it? Okay. So when you're talking about sharing your story, all right, whatever you were best known for that you shared in part one, you want to expound on that in part two. Okay. What was it about that? that you had was your pain point okay mine was i wasn't able to see my family i didn't make that much money and i didn't feel like i was growing and then the solution to that problem okay what did this company and what you found how is it that it became that solution and then the future all right the future is hey how it is that you plan on going forward the vision all right and so that's what we talked about you know last one but now we're going to talk about, you know, the perfect business opportunity, guys. And so, you know, the, one of the biggest parts of it is your intro. Okay, your intro is key. Why? Because you want to catch the audience. All right. You want to catch the audience attention. You know, people have literally today a study was done. If on a Instagram reel, if you don't catch the person's attention in under a second, they are not going to stay for your entire reel. Think about that. That is how short the intention span of we, our attention span right now of this generation. Think about it. I'm guilty of that too. If I don't see something I like immediately, I'm probably not going to stay and watch it. All right. Now being a presenter and someone coming to a presentation or coming to a webinar is a little different because they have an expectation of being there for a little bit and seeing the information that you provide. But you want to be able to connect with your audience and you want to be able to do that in the beginning. That's why, you know, you hear Joel Osteen every time he speaks a sermon, he always starts with a joke. People look forward to that joke. You know, if you ever hear me speak like I did last night, all right, I always start sort of with a joke because it gets people's attention. And then you go into the story, guys, and then you go into what we call the five key elements of a perfect presentation. So here we go, guys, the introduction. Why is it worth my time? Okay, value and interest and what to expect. What to expect, okay, that is part of the introduction. And so when I start, guys, I always start with my story. All right, you guys have heard my story over and over and over again. I've said it, you know, now probably thousands of times, you know, over the past eight years. And so you start with the story, okay? Value and interest. 
And then you tell people, and whether it's a joke or not, but you hear myself, you hear David, you hear Myra, you hear Chris, you hear Jackie, some of the presenters that we have, we always say, hey, this is what to expect while you're sitting here, you know, for the next 15, 20 minutes. Some of us joke and say for the next three hours, okay, to lighten up the mood. But we always let people know what to expect. So here's an example, okay? And this is, this is David's example. Hi, my name is David Marquez. And what I'm about to share with you today not only solves a huge need in the marketplace, but it is also a solution to help Americans in a financial crisis. And so what did he do? He caught the attention. He said exactly what it is, what the problem is. And he also said just in that statement right there that we are going to show you how to solve that problem just in that little statement and says during the next 30 minutes, I'm going to show you how. And so now there's an expectation from the audience that, hey, okay, you're gonna be here for about 30 minutes, not two hours, not three hours, but you're gonna be here for about 30 minutes, okay? Because believe it or not, the audience wants to know that. Why? Because people are busy, they got things to do. And so they wanna know what time frame to expect. But before I do that, let me tell you my story, guys. And then again, here's the story, background, what you didn't like about it, the solution you found and how you feel about the future. All right, and so that basically is the first five or so minutes of your presentation, okay? Connecting with the crowd, telling them what to expect, okay? Having them give you their full attention, making eye contact. All right, this is what presenters do innately. That means it's almost like muscle memory after you've done it, you know, so many times. But in the beginning, you have to practice it, okay? You have to make a uh, conscious effort, if you will, to, um, to get better at that. And, and that's what we've been able to do. That's what I've been able to do. And I'm still not great at it at all, but you know, I've gotten better at it over the past eight years or so. So part three, all right, the five key elements of any presentation. Now this is key and you guys are going to kind of, if you think back or you think to our presentation, there's a reason why they are structured a certain way. It all goes with a flow, all right? And so you have product and service. So what do we? We are financial literacy. We are credit restoration, okay? And so that's why our presentation starts off that way. And then we're talking about the company. And then we go into, let's say, the history of the company. Why is it that this company can solve the problem that you have? Then compensation and plan structure. You see, people want to know, is this worth my time? Are the margins where it needs to be in order for me to give you something, an asset, something that they value the most, which is their time? So is this worth my time? And then people want to know, hey, are you going to support them? What is the support like? Because if you think about people at their jobs, guys, you know, they don't get the support that they need. A lot of the time, they're there to figure it out themselves. And so what they want to know, hey, if I give you my time, are you going to support me? Are you going to be there for me? Are you going to ask my question? Does the company have a system in place in order to make this transition that you want me to make to something I may have never done before? All right, does the company have a system in place to, uh, to help me and make that smoothing? And then about the timing, is the market right for this? All right, is the company a startup? All right, is the timing right? Because listen, guys, timing and placement are key into any business. And so do you want to go into something that's already saturated? Okay, something that, you know, you're competing with Apple and you're competing with Amazon, you're competing with Walmart. All right, no, you probably don't. And so is the timing right? And so, but first the explanation, all right? And, and so what I learned as an entrepreneur is that you should always do your homework and evaluate these five key elements when looking at a, a business opportunity. Now, this is something that I don't necessarily say, but I've heard David and some other presenters say this over and over and over again, because what do they want? They want to tell you the five key elements up front. That way, when they're doing the presentation, they're checking off the list of those five key elements because now they want it to make sense to you. And so they say, hey, you know, is the timing right? Is the product right? 
okay, is the company history, the compensation. And if you're checking all these boxes mentally, because we've already programmed it in you, that this is what we're going to talk about, then it makes it a no brainer, all right, for the audience or for the person that you're exposing our business to. Okay, you don't have to have all five. But if you do, that is a magical situation and you should take it very seriously. Absolutely, guys, if the company and the business that you're looking at, all right, meets all five of those key elements, then it's a no brainer, but it's how you present it. You see how it is that you can transfer your beliefs onto other people, because that's all a presentation is. It's the transfer of beliefs onto somebody else. You want them to see what it is that you see. And that's what an effective presentation does. So here we go, the element, the product and service, all right? The four questions to ask about a product and service. All right, is there a recognized need for this product or service in the marketplace? Now, I want you to answer this question mentally while I'm training you. You know, and I want you to think about our business. I want you to think about our product offering, okay? Is there a recognized need for this product or service in the marketplace? And the answer is a resounding yes, absolutely. I mean, if you look at credit scores, if you look at the financial ignorance that's going on, if you look at the record inflation, if you look at, you know, wages, you know, not going up, but, in, but prices going up. If you look at the market today, people living paycheck to paycheck, people not understanding what's going on with their finances. So yes, the marketplace is ripe and ready for our services. Does it meet that need? Absolutely. Our services meet the need. Okay. But we have to learn and we have to listen that way we can translate which service or which services best meet that person's need. Is it price to sell when compared to the quality of others? Well, guys, we don't have, we don't have any competition really. Yeah. You might be saying, well, Dr. Bogarty, yeah, you got, what is it? Uh, CreditRepair.com, Credit Saint. You have all these people out there, but do they truly offer the value that we have? Absolutely not. The thing about us though, we are word of mouth. All right, those companies advertise. Now guys, I advertise, but I advertise as my own brand, okay? And so what you have to do is create your brand, let people know through education, this is what you're doing. That way they are attracted to you. And then we could talk about the quality and the services that we offer. And is it priced for a profit margin? Absolutely. And we all know that, all right? But the people don't know that. We know that, hey, it's $100 a client, $12 residual, okay? We make cab bonus, we make generational override, all right? Infinity bonuses. We know all that, but we have to be able to convey it in a way that people understand. And just to let you know a little secret, they don't need to know everything. What they need to know is just enough for them to make a $290 decision. That's it. So sometimes keep it a little simpler will help people make a smarter decision or make a quicker decision because you're not flooding them with that much information. All right, number two, the company. All right. And this, you know, it says right there, transitional pivot. If you believe the product's a solid offering, now let's talk about the company does have what it takes. And that's a transitional phrase. All right, it breaks parts up, those transitional phrase. It's like, hey, I was looking for something, I found it, you know things like that. Those are transitional phrases. So if you want to go ahead and take a, a screenshot of that, um, that will help you move your presentation along. If you guys have ever heard me present, I use a lot of transitional phrases in order to go ahead and separate different parts of the presentation. Okay. Now, does the company have it was it takes, all right, to last in the marketplace? Guys, the way our school system is set up, the way our financial system is set up, we will never, ever run out of clients. We'll never run out of clients. We don't teach financial literacy in schools. The banks make money off of people that have challenged credit or else they wouldn't be able to stay in business. If everybody got charged two and 3%, the banks wouldn't make any money. Okay. And so it is in their interest to keep people at a low score, ignorant, low paying jobs, low wages, you know, that way they can charge that 18%, 19%. Then we can default on it. Then they can sell it to somebody else and make money that way. It's a vicious cycle. So are we going to last in the marketplace? Absolutely. All right. Do we have the ability to deal with change? 
Of course we do. All right. In a good economy, our company, our company is great. In a bad economy, our company is exceptional. Why? Because people are always looking for a way. In a good economy, hey, you know what? Hey, credit restoration is great. All right. Yeah, I want to make a little extra money. That's cool. But in a bad economy, in a recession, oh my God. Listen, we made, guys, if you were around here, if you were in the company when uh, the pandemic hit, that was when our company exploded. Economy sucked. People couldn't go to work. They were stuck in the house. They were looking for something. If you look at what we're going on right now, guys, record inflation, 7%. All right, we have realtors that can't sell a house if they try to give it away. I mean, think about it. All those professionals, tax professionals, we have so many people out there. If you look on their Instagram or Facebook, or if you talk to them, they are looking to do something else. Realtors are bartending. You know, MLOs are, are doing other businesses. If you look at the people, which is the real estate market, which gauges the economy, it's not doing well right now, but we have to be able to convey that message. So yes, all right, deal with change. When it comes to experience, companies been around guys going on 19 years, 19 years. And when, like today, I spoke with a client that I enrolled and he said, well, I just looked your company up and uh, it looks like you guys were under FTC investigation. I said, absolutely, we were. We welcomed it and we beat it. That just shows our company is recession proof, but also we survived the FTC. Most companies don't do that. And so our company is golden going forward. He was like, yep, you're absolutely right. And enroll. You see, use anytime someone tries to use something against you, find a way to switch it to where it, it supports you. Do they have the money? Yes, our company has the money. All right. And do they have the management experience? Paramel is one of the smartest people that I know. Company's been around for 19 years almost. Company is always paid on time. The company has always adapted to change, as you can see now with the business credit, the business funding, or a lot of other things that we have coming up. So yes, we have the management experience. All right, element three, compensation plan and structure, okay? So now we've given the company a credibility, okay? We went over the product and the service. And so people say, okay, it's value there. Okay, but now how is it that I'm going to get paid? All right, show me why this is worth my time, because if not, I need to go get a second job, that third job, all right? I need to send my wife to work, okay? Even maybe my oldest kid to work. That's right, guys. Hey, there are teenagers out there that are out there working to help support the family instead of going to school or playing sports because they have to do their part. And so people want to know, hey, can this supplement or can this replace my current income? Okay, so now can people generate income quickly? Absolutely, guys. Every time somebody enrolls in our company, they receive what? $100. Think about that. $100 for a 15, 20 minute phone call. You do that once a week, that's an extra 100 bucks. Twice a week, that's an extra 200 bucks. Five times a week, guys, that's an extra 500 bucks. Well, if you're making an extra 500 bucks, what does that eliminate? The second job. It eliminates the second job because the average person who works a second job is only making between $700 and $1,300 a month on that second job. But they're working an average of 20 to 30 hours on that second job. You see, this is something that we have to be able to convey to people. And so when you let somebody know that, hey, every time you bring on a client, that's $100. You didn't have to leave a house for it. You didn't have to get dressed for it. All right. You didn't have to learn any complex terminology, technology. No, all you had to do was provide the information. That's it. And let someone make a decision. With reasonable part-time effort, can you develop a reasonable income? Yes, you can. If you show up to trainings, if you don't try to reinvent the wheel, all right, if you launch your new agent the right way, yes, all right, with time and effort, you can make a reasonable amount of income. You see, what we want to do is get our people to core rank. What is our core rank? Okay, our core rank is field trainer. Okay, it's the first rank in our company. So two agents, three clients, you got your first promotion. Now you're going from $100 to $160. And now you're being able to override your brand new agent, $60. And so yes, you're able to go ahead and with time and effort, you know, make a reasonable income. And then for serious people, guys, these are your professionals. These are your entrepreneurs. These are your go-getters. These are your red personality people, okay? 
for serious people, is there a possibility to make serious full-time income? Well, we show during our presentation, okay, the different levels and different ranks. Yes, it takes time and effort to get to them, but if you're serious, you're willing to go through the process in order to hit those ranks. So yes, you can say, yes, absolutely. You know, I'm not there yet, but my good friend, Myra, okay, she's been part of the company for about five years, but in her ninth month, she hit a rank called executive sales director. The average executive sales director, if you look at the income disclosure sheet, earns about fifty-five to sixty thousand dollars a year. That's executive sales director. Or you have my good friend David Marquez. Five years ago, he was a DJ. Now he's what's called an executive ambassador. Executive ambassador does ten thousand dollars a month in a bonus. Okay, and makes multiple six figures every single year but he was serious for it. And then if you want to get even higher than that, then you have a really good friend of ours down in South Florida. His name is Alfred Nixon. All right, Alfred Nixon is a multiple seven figure earner, joined our company seven years ago. So yes, okay, giving examples and sharing stories, you can let people know that if you are serious and you want to work hard at this, yes, all right, you can make life-changing income. So now let's get to element four, guys. And we're still talking about our presentation. Our presentation goes over all these elements. And so now when you look back at our presentation, you can see, okay, this is why this is placed here. This is why this is placed here. This is why they transition to this at a certain time. Okay, so element four support. The pivot, if you feel confident about the product, the company, the compensation plan, now let's talk about the support. Because people may feel good, they're like, okay, there is a need for that service. Yes, you can make money, but can I really do it? That's what, that's what you're fighting against. Can I really do it? Well, in order to overcome that and combat that, people want to know that you're supporting them. So we think about traditional business, all right? You think about support, payroll, research technology, customer service, training tools, legal, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. That is traditional business, okay? That is what other companies or traditional companies, if you decided to start a business, you have to provide. But when you look at our company, okay, we provide all of that for our clients, for our partners, all of it. It is turnkey, ready to go. We supply the support. We, so we, we provide the payroll, okay? You bring on an agent, you're not responsible for getting them that check. The company is responsible for getting them that check, all right? The company has already done the research, the development. They have the tools out there for you. The technology is there. You log in with your email, ask for your social, or whatever it is your password is for your business back office. The technology is there, ready to go. The customer service support, guys, we have top-notch customer service support. I've called them twice today. Guys, I was on hold for maybe a minute, maybe a minute. Always when I call them number one in the queue, number one in the queue. All right, so the support is door, training and tools, right? I'm here training you now. I'm part of the company, all right? We have our app. We have trainings wherever you want to go. You can be on your phone listening to a training at any time. So the training and tools are there. Legal is there, all right? We have leverage time. What does leverage time mean? Well, listen, David couldn't be on tonight because he had a family emergency. Well, guess what? His business hasn't stopped. Why? Because he leverages my time. I leverage his time. I leverage Myra's time. Myra leverages our time. You see, that's leverage time. So when you're not working, your business is still working. When people start to realize that, they're like, oh, shit. Okay, okay, okay. I'm starting to get it. And then you have the systems in place. Systems, guys, build businesses. Not people, it's systems. We always use the, the famed example, McDonald's. But guys, it's such a great example because guess what? 17 and 18 year olds can't come up with systems. All right, but they can follow a system. And they follow that system to a T. Why? Because it's just simple. You see, sometimes we look and we make this too hard. It's simple. Get somebody enrolled, get them launched, get them their, 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 um, their, their, uh, their, their websites, show them how to invite, and then let the system take care of itself. And then manage their expectations. Let them know this is going to take a little bit of time. That's it. 
And then number four, guys, is timing. Timing is key in any type of business. But when you look at our business, okay, see, we're in a unique space. We're in a unique space. You see, when the personal computer came out, all right, those people, what, in the 1970s, early 1980s, that timing was there. Bill Gates was there because he got the software in, all right, when software really wasn't a thing. You see, that timing was there. Now, if you say, hey, I'm going to open a computer company up and I'm going to make computers, well, you got some hell of a competition. You got Apple, you got Microsoft, you got Compaq, all right, you got so much competition out there. So the chances of you succeeding are slim. Why? Because you missed the timing. Well, with our company right here, guys, the timing, the timing, all right, it, it, it varies because we will always, always have clients. We will always, always be, uh, people will always, always be in need of our services, be in need of our business opportunity. Why? It's because of the way our system is made. It's the way our system is. But if you want to look at this, guys, and you're talking about agents, guys, we are going through a relaunch. We are going through a rebuild. Guys, if you look back in our history, there are so many companies that did a relaunch, that did a rebuild. As a matter of fact, if there, you are a successful company, you have relaunched and rebuilt so many times. Guys, Apple at the time, at the time in the 1980s, they were one of the number one computer companies. When they came out with the Macintosh, then what did they do? They fired Steve Jobs. Guess what? They tanked. Then they hired them back. They did a relaunch and now they're most valuable company in the world. All companies go through adversity. All right. You are not a success unless you've been tested. But you see the weak minded people that left, left Apple because they came in that test. And then when Bill, I mean, when Steve Jobs came back, now they're like, oh, damn, why did I do that? Why? Because guess what, guys? They weren't strong enough mentally to endure the test. So here we are, guys. If you want to look at that, guys, if you look at this scale, you got growth scale, and you got maturity. All right. If you're part of the first 40K agents in any company, especially direct sales of network marketing company, guys, if you were there for the first 40K, you're going to make up about 80% of the wealth of that company. Well, our new numbers are out. What do we have? We have about 19,000 active agents. 19,000. So, hey, are you in position? Absolutely. Is the timing right? Absolutely. And then you go in and you summarize, okay? And so now you go back and you mention those five key elements that you mentioned in the beginning. Okay, so is the product good? Absolutely. Is the company credible? Absolutely. Does the product solve a problem? Absolutely. Can you make money? Absolutely. Are you gonna provide support? Absolutely. Guys, guess what? You do those things right, you just bought on a new agent. You just bought on, you know, a new client or you just helped your people bring on a new client. And so thank you. And that is guys, in essence, what a presentation is made out of. And so hopefully that was valuable. Hopefully I was able to show you, you know, why it is our presentation is structured the way it is and little gems on how to make your presentation just a little more exciting but also how to structure it. Because when you understand it, then you can teach it. But if you don't understand it, and you're just going through the motions, then people will see that and you can't effectively teach it. And then you can't effectively present the, uh, the information, guys. And so that's a little bit of a, a deeper dive into our power presentation that David and I, uh, we, we decided to go ahead and we spent many, many, many hours, all right, in his lodge um you know going over and 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 creating that and um i'm just blessed that i'm able to go ahead and teach it because i want to see everybody win if you've had a, if you had any interaction with me which everybody on here has then then you know i want to see people win just genuinely win but you're not going to win guys if you don't hold yourself accountable you're not going to win if you don't show up you're not going to win if you don't master your craft. The reason why we cheer for people on TV, guys, is because they spent tens of thousands of hours in private where nobody's cheering for them, learning how to master their craft, getting coached by different coaches, whether it's Pee Wee, JB, varsity, college, high school, getting coached, learning, getting better to whereas now the world recognizes. And that's the same thing we have to do. We have to treat our business. 
we have to spend those hours getting that personal development in. All right, learning the presentation, learning the product. You know, we have to spend that time doing that because if we don't, you're not going to win. And then a lot of the time we, as a society, which we always do, we blame other people when really we just got to look in the mirror and blame ourselves. Listen, David enrolled me in this program. David enrolled me into this company. All right, but David's not in charge of my success. If I fail, I can't say, oh, it was all David's fault or it's the company's fault. No, it's my fault. All right. He gave me the keys to the car. I'm the one that didn't drive it. I'm the one that didn't change the oil. I didn't wash it. I didn't change the tires. I'm the one that let it. He gave it to me. He gave me the opportunity and I let it go. And that's how you have to be real with some people that's on your teams, guys. You have to let people know that. Listen, yes, I enrolled you, but I'm not in control. You're in control of your life. You're in control of your business. I'm here to help. And even if I wasn't here, okay, then it's up to you to get out there and make this thing work. And so listen, I'm going to go ahead and bring David on. I think he wanted to say something. Um, you know, next Tuesday, guys, let's go ahead and double and triple these numbers, all right? Let your team know that, hey, this, this, is, this is accountability right here. Because you have to work. You can't push a dead bear up a tree. That's what a famous saying a guy used to always tell me. And, it, you know, we're tired of pushing dead bears, and I know you are too. And so it's going to be some new energy. It's going to be some new people coming on. And the last thing you want to see is have two, three, four, five, ten new people come on, and now they're passing you in rank. And they're out there winning when you've had the keys to this for years and years. So go ahead, David, if you want to hop on. Yes. So I had we had an emergency. Obviously, I attended. Um, I, I listened to everything. Arnold, drop some flames in the chat if you felt Arnold did a phenomenal job going over the five presentations every entrepreneur every network marketer should know now i just wanted to elaborate the five points that he went over that obviously you know hearing it again hearing it from him knowing it guys we have the best product on the market i mean when you talk about the product how many people need our product right and is it price to sell I know companies that charge more than this. Hell, we joined a company that charged less, but their customer support, right? He talked about the support. We have the support. You don't have somebody that joined with that company. They came over with us and were so impressed that they were like, you're next in line, less than a minute. They love that. So we have the product, we have the support. Let's talk about the company. You know, Paramount, I remember when we were dealing with COVID, he called me personally, asked me how me and my family were doing. You know, this is a man that doesn't care. He cares more about the people than the company. And this is why we were able to surpass the FTC, which brings us to timing. You know, we're, we're a company that isn't, you know, a hundred thousand, a million. I met Arnold in a company that had a million distributors and that company fell. They went through so many companies because of the company. And so when I look at the five things, it's crazy because we have all five. We do have something magical. And the fact that we have 17 people on today does not make me feel bad it makes me it, it re-energizes me it makes me feel like there's a lot of people that are going to miss out and so i'm super excited and for everybody on here i hope you're excited because i already know what's about to happen and i see where we're about to go and so he did a phenomenal job guys it doesn't matter when you look at it you know, the, the product, the company, the comp plan. I mean, our comp plan pays more than any other comp plan out there. I know that because I've, I've seen other comp plans. And so seeing that, you know, you guys should learn it. The more you learn it, the better you're able to explain it to somebody else that doesn't understand. Or even a hell, a, a network marketer. You know, whenever I speak to somebody that, that introduces uh, opportunity to me, all I say to them is how many people are involved and when did it get started? And so I'm, I'm super excited, guys. I just wanted to thank Arnold 
for covering and doing a phenomenal job. And next week, guys, this is the closeout of the month. I want to see everybody do well. We, we have a big contest and promotion coming out. We're going to announce it. And obviously, everybody on here that was on tonight's training, I took a screenshot. You know, you guys are going to be blessed. And I, I can't wait to take it to the top. Obviously, thank you, Arnold. And uh, let's get it, guys. Hey, guys. And so just one more thing. We, we the I just was on the um, the, the presentation that, you know, our leadership is doing right now. And guys, it was phenomenal. And this is three times a week, Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday, that you're getting the best presenters that the company has that's taking their time to do presentations. So please take advantage of that. Invite, all right? Invite. And, you know, we've always been dropping invites in our chats, but guys, just simple invites. If you were on Sunday's training, all right, um, with, uh, with uh, Big Al, I mean, God, it was so simple. That's how I had four people on the presentation. What's, what, what's, been, what's new with you? I never thought of asking somebody that. What's new with you? Listening to what they say and then saying, oh, well, you know what? I found a way to be able to take care of that. Are you available at eight to see the information? So damn simple. I did that, invited four people on. It was that simple. Don't overthink it. So invite, 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 invite. Guys, stay plugged in, plug your teams in. And if Myra, if you wanna hop back on, I'm not sure if you have anything to say, Superstar. If not, everybody just have a great, phenomenal night. I look forward to seeing everybody at the top. Yes, thank you so much, Arnold, for that training. My apologies for actually just opening it up for David, but your leadership is exemplary. I know that you've always stepped up to the plate to serve, um, and it's genuine. It really is very much appreciated. I can say that, I believe, on behalf of the entire team. I did also want to say that I did go ahead and share the recording for last week's training. This training recording will be shared as well. And thank you, everyone, for being present. Let us expand our reach. And again, God bless and have an amazing night, everyone. Good night, good night. Good night, thank you.